To all my Pokemon fans out there, can we please take a moment to appreciate how cool this mug is? YouTubers love coffee, hey, it's definitely a thing. G'day guys, JJ here, and I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've been enjoying the Gold Coast and Queensland vlogs. I certainly had a lot of fun making them. I am back down here in New South Wales now, and unfortunately the border has closed up to Queensland again. And even though I'm home now and I'm missing the Goldie a lot, I thought I could squeeze one more video in there, something I've got a lot of experience with, where to find wildlife on the Gold Coast. Having lived up on the Goldie for nearly five years, I've had a lot of pretty awesome wildlife encounters and I just wanna give you guys a bit of insight on what you can expect to see and where you can expect to see it. So number one, let's hop straight into it. Oh, that was so original. Kangaroos. Kangaroos guys, you just can't beat them. You can find a number of different species all throughout Australia, but there's one particular spot on the Gold Coast, which is an absolute hot spot. And it has to be one of my favorite places, probably the place I've visited the most out of all the ones I'm about to show you. So at the Coombabar Lakelands Conservation Area, you will find a massive mob of Eastern Grey Kangaroos. And when I say massive, I mean massive. There can be hundreds there at any one time. And if you go during the day, you may only see a few here and there, but if you head down in the afternoon, that's when they all come out and start growing grazing on a massive open field, kangaroos of all sizes, big fellas, all the way down to little joeys. Occasionally you'd have a little plane go over because it's right next to an airstrip, but apart from that, quite a serene little spot away from the hustle and bustle of the Gold Coast. Some of my favorite photos I've ever taken, including this one behind me, are from Kumbaba. It's a place that I really got to hone my own photography and video skills. So I'd spend countless hours down there observing the kangaroos and was able to get some fantastic shots over the years. If you go down there at the right time of year, the sunsets are absolutely insane. I think it's around April, May where the sunsets are at their best. You just get these incredible colors and the sun dips down in the perfect spot. And mate, that's just what Australian dreams are made of. All right, now spot number two. Uh, this is a bit of a cheeky one. It's the exact same spot, but for a different species. Kumbaba is also famous for its koalas. You can find koalas all throughout the Gold Coast, but I've found Kumbaba to be the most consistent and nearly every time I go down there, I'll see at least one. On a good day, I might even spot three or four. I always start by checking the same tree that I saw them in last time, but that very rarely works. You kind of just have to walk around looking up. Your neck might get a bit sore, but most of the time you will see one of these guys resting pretty high up in a tree. But occasionally, if you get really lucky, you will see these guys resting in lower forks or even bouncing around the ground, moving from tree to tree. And nothing quite beats that, hey. Firstly, the accomplishment of finding these guys, because it's not always easy, and then having a fluffy little koala staring back at you, it's just unbelievable. Now on the whole, koalas on the Gold Coast aren't doing so well. Because the Gold Coast is such a booming area for development, the habitat that the koalas rely on is getting further and further fragmented, which is breaking the population up and making it very difficult for them to access each other. Right now is the start of koala breeding season and they're in dispersal mode. They do move around quite a lot at this time. Unfortunately, that means crossing road, which is probably the single biggest threat for koalas on the Gold Coast. You will unfortunately see these guys as roadkill quite regularly, which is why areas like Kumbaba are so important and will hopefully never be developed for human needs and provides a relatively safe space for these koalas to live freely. Each year during this season, hundreds of koalas end up at the wildlife hospitals in southeast Queensland as they're trying to disperse, as they've been displaced from their homes. It really is getting to the point where it's quite concerning. Fortunately, there are a lot of ways we can support koala conservation, whether it's supporting the wildlife hospitals after they come into care or joining environmental groups that lobby to keep those areas of habitat untouched and a place for koalas to thrive in the future. Okay, now destination number three is home to the most colorful critter on this list, the rainbow lorikeet. Rainbow lorikeets are such an iconic Australian bird. Everybody loves them. And the best place to see them in huge numbers and up close and personal is at Kurumbum Wildlife Sanctuary at their lorikeet feeding. So the flocks of lorikeets at Kurumban are habituated to humans, they are fed, but they are wild birds at the same time. It's always their choice whether they come or go, and it's a tradition that's been going on at Kurumban for a very, very long time. Since like the 40s or something, I think. Kurumban Wildlife Sanctuary was established by Alex Griffiths, who was a beekeeper and flower grower, and essentially he wanted to find a way to stop the lorikeets from getting into his flowers and getting into his garden. So he started feeding a nectar substitute to keep the birds off his flowers, and a very similar mixture is still fed to the birds today. 
Lorikeets are very different from other parrots because they eat nectar. If you ever get a close look at a lorikeet's tongue, you see they've got these very feathery little bristles right at the end, and that's what they use to get into the flowers and get that nectar out. And if you've ever seen a rainbow lorikeet, I think a result of eating that nectar means these guys are hyperactive all the time. They're like little bullets of the Australian bush. The numbers at the feeding can vary quite a lot depending on the time of year. If there's a lot of food out there for the lorikeets in the form of flowers and nectar, there won't be many at the feeding. But when food's scarce, that's when you'll see a lot more at the lorikeet arena. There's one feeding in the morning and there's one in the afternoon. And when you get there, you just give a gold coin donation. They'll fill a little plate up full of nectar mix and the lorikeets will come right down, landing on your little plate, on your arms and just go nuts over that mixture. There's also these little carousels that the lorikeets go around on. There's someone down there giving an educational talk about them. It's something that the Gold Coast is very well known for and if you're in the area, you just have to tick it off the list. Now, destination number four actually featured in my last video. It's O'Reilly's Plateau in the Gold Coast hinterland. And O'Reilly's is another hotspot for birds. Similar to Corumban, you can purchase a plate of food and the birds will come down and eat that if they want. But again, they're wild birds. So if the going's really good out in the bush, there's heaps of stuff to eat, they'll be out there. If pickings are a little bit slim, they'll come back to the free feed. Well, it's free for them, not free for you. You've got to pay a few bucks. But the parrots aren't the only wildlife you'll see at O'Reilly's. It's one of the most diverse areas for birds anywhere in Australia. You can see lyre birds, any number of small songbirds. And if you head out into the jungle and close your eyes, the amount of bird song you can hear is just unbelievable. Another little species I love seeing up at O'Reilly's, which a lot of people may not have heard of, is the paddy melon. And I know you're probably wondering, what the hell is a paddy melon? Is that a word you just made up? No, it's a real thing. The ones up there are called red-necked paddy melons, and they're a rainforest dwelling wallaby. I've camped out at O'Reilly's a few times, and if you wake up fairly early, you'll often see these guys out having a morning browse. One time, a bunch of them even woke me up by licking the condensation off my tent. I would definitely recommend a day or two to get the most out of your wildlife experience at O'Reilly's. Look for birds during the day, even at night. The night spotting is incredible. You'll see any number of possums and gliders and owls, and then keep an eye out for the paddy melons. I don't know why the quokkas get all the glory, because these guys are just as cute. All right, now number five, saving the biggest till last. And for this one, you're gonna have to head out towards the ocean. The Gold Coast is a fantastic fantastic place to spot humpback whales during their annual migration. The east coast of Australia is part of the Humpback Highway. The whales will migrate from the cooler Antarctic waters up to the warm waters of the Pacific, which is where they'll breed and have their calves. They pass the Gold Coast on their northern migration around June, July. Then they'll do a yui and make their way back down south during August and September. Now there are two main ways that you can see these whales. The first is land-based whale watching. You can watch them from the beach or one of the headlands, and it's always a lot of fun seeing them do their thing, but most of the time they are pretty far away. The best way to see whales is to get out on one of the many whale watching boats that run out of the Gold Coast and get into their domain out into the ocean and see them there. Whale watching boats will leave from several different spots along the Gold Coast. They'll all take you to that same destination out into the big blue. And you don't just get whales, you get that epic Gold Coast city skyline as your backdrop too. Now seeing a whale up close has got to be one of the most incredible experiences you could ever have. They are massive, and of course everyone knows this, but when you're right up close to one, you just don't realize how big they can get. 15 meters long and up to 40 tons. And when you're that close and you hear that that breath of air through the blowhole, it just gives you shivers and goosebumps. As cool as it is seeing these whales cruise along as they make their way through their migration, they'll often give you a lot more than that. These guys are known as one of the most acrobatic species of whales, and they'll be breaching, tail lobbing, throwing their massive four meter pectoral flippers around, peduncle throws, all sorts of really cool behaviors. And what scientists think is this is how they communicate to each other over long distances, or over short distances, because if you're waving that massive tail around, other whales aren't gonna get too close. And if you happen to be snorkeling or diving during the migration, you'll often hear the whales singing underneath the water, which is just, I get goosebumps thinking about it. It's just so incredible. So there you have it. That's my top five places to see wildlife on the Gold Coast. I know I'm chomping at the bit to get back there. If you think I've left any out, definitely let me know in the comments down below. There's always more to see. There's always more to learn. There's always more to explore. If you've enjoyed this one, guys, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe down below and hit the bell so you never miss any future videos. Thanks for letting me ramble on and I'll see you in the next one.